Scouch. What's this? A demon! The demon we heard about? Sounds like it's having fun. Then we'll use this distraction.
for your sake. <laughs> Well, it wiped out the security for us, but... Well, look at that. Wolfie's got the crest of Amenoch, the same pendant worn by priestesses. Then that makes this demon... Yeah, she must be the missing mother, Mahina. Don't just stand there. It's 
village would become a demon. Eleanor? She's never going to be the same again. This is the least I can do for her. So says Reason. Huh? That feeling! <laughs> Damn! Let the demon be. We don't need it. That demon... I guess she caught Demon Blight when she was looking for her daughter. Yeah, that's what the girl at the inn said. But even after turning into a demon, she's still searching for her daughter. Well, Rokuro, Korogane, and Dial all remember what they wanted when they were human, right? Demon or not, she's a mother. It's no surprise she would still be protective of her child. It could be that, or it could be something else. Well, I hope that's what it is. I know that must be how she felt as a human, but demons don't have a sense of motherhood or any such thing. You saw how violent she was. She's not Mahina anymore. When she became a demon, she lost all capacity for empathy and love. It's heartbreaking, but it's the truth. Velvet and Rokuro still have empathy. One demon left unchecked could take a hundred lives. And this one's even willing to attack exorcists. Demons can wipe out entire villages, even cities, just as they destroyed my village. Uh. Thus, my path is clear. Eleanor is right. There's no turning back once you've changed. Perhaps it would be a mercy to grant her peace through death.
This was Scout ship. You sure you want me for this? Excellent. Wait till you see me hand. You sure you want me for this? I'm done. Anything else need chopping? I'm done. Anything else need chop? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm as handy with a kitchen knife as a. I'm done. Anything else needs. Is there some sort of trick to it? Well, you could always try busting through it, but I wouldn't. Who knows what sort of traps you might trigger? I know, I know. Look at that diamond-shaped stone in the door. Haven't we seen that somewhere else? You're right. It was on the pedestal with that chalice. That huge thing? You must have some sharp eyes there. I was more interested in what was inside that chalice. So, what? That chalice is the key? Somehow I doubt it'll be that simple. Some stones are colored, and some aren't. It must hold some kind of significance. I think you're right.
I feel the power coming from further inside. Hmm, how very intriguing. Well, there you are. That barrier again! Looks like we were right. Another Therian. Just as Velvet conjectured, each of the seven heads seems to assume a different form. The sensation! It was here! Well, look at that. I guess your hunt panned out too, kiddo. This is just how I felt in Lord Forest. That must have been an Earth Pulse point back there too. Well, what are we going to do with this one? Can we get it to shrink like that bug of yours? I don't care whether it lives or dies. As long as we defeat it and take out one of Inominat's heads, that's all that matters. Try not to let it eat you. That'd be very uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I don't think this Therian's getting any smaller. <laughs> the demon again! must refer to demons, then. Feeding on demons. I know what that's like. <laughs> Mommy. Mommy. Look! It turned into a little girl! Is that... Kamoana? Mommy, why? Why did you leave me all alone? <laughs> did I do something wrong? Was I too weak? I'm sorry, Mommy. 
I'm sorry. No, this can't be happening. I tried so hard to be strong for you, Moby. The man from the Abbey made me strong. So please, Mommy, please come back. The Abbey made her strong? By turning her into a Therian? Jeez, those happy jokers really get off on this sacrifice stuff, don't they? I can't believe it. Then, that, that woman, she was trying to save her own daughter. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! I miss you! Mommy! <laughs> Dying, unable to save her daughter, all she could do was offer herself to feed her hungry child. No, this... this is my fault! So, should we bring her with us? Someone like her will only slow us down. That Therian isn't going anywhere! Oscar! What is the Abbey doing? Please tell me, I have to know! Eleanor! The less you know, the better. I must know! I killed her mother, and then the poor girl, she... Ah... <sighs> So she must have devoured the demon. But don't let that trouble you. The demon was a necessary sacrifice to bring an end to this world's pain and suffering. That wasn't just some demon! She was a mother! She was all this girl had! Her one and only mother. Be that as it may, those who possess strong wings must... It's not nice to make a girl cry. <laughs> Mommy! Kamawana. It's now or never. Out of the way, Lafayette. Wait! Have you no compassion? This isn't up for discussion. I thought you just wanted to weaken an Ominot! You can sever the link! You don't have to kill her! Had a change of heart. Apparently, a woman's tears truly do have frightening power. I'm just curious about something Grimoire said. I can always kill this one later. If we're taking her with us, we'd better grab her and go. No sense lingering in the enemy's territory. Hey, Kamawana. My name's Lafayette. Do you want to come with me and my friends and get out of here? Where's my mommy? I'll be lonely without her. You're not alone, sweetie. I promise. Even if she's far away, your mother will always be looking over you. How do you know? Because... That's what my mother does for me, too. Let's go, Kamawana. Okay. We will need 
Stop fooling around. But I'm serious about my fooling around. Not good. The malevolence is getting stronger. My, my. The effects are already starting to show. Grim, what's up? Did you come to share something else you found in that book? Not quite. I'm afraid the malevolence has grown too dense for me to hole up at the inn reading. Malevolence? <laughs> the hell? What's that coming out of their bodies? Malevolence, they're all hitting their limits. Demon Blight! Even the Inn Girl! Why is this happening? They're demons now. Their malevolence is spilling over. The malevolence. All of that energy spilling from their bodies. That's what causes the demon blight? Do you know what demon blight really is? What demons are? They couldn't have gotten far. Track them down at all costs. We'll talk later. The exorcists are going to have their hands full with these demons. Let's get back to the ship while we can. Okay. 
Come on, really? Scout ship.
I going? Where's my mom? Kamoana, your mother is still far away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to Haria. Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay, I'll go with you. I wouldn't want mom to be sad. All right, you're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? That depends. Moloch taboo? This is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans. For their own protection. Do you still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call Demon Blight, does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> by nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realized this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon blight. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! It used to be that humans couldn't see demons, or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then, on the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to a Nominot. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse Point... Clever boy. 
That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So you're saying it's all my fault? <sighs> hey, what's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out! So even the truth won't stop you. Very well. Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? Um... Uh... That's Eleanor. Ch cheer up, Eleanor. Your mommy's looking over you too, you know. Yeah, so she is. Thank you, Kamoana. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. Malevolence is born of emotion, you see. But your kind must have found a way around it. Malakim experience emotions too. But Malakim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Malak turn into a demon. That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <laughs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Moloch with something that turned it into a wyvern. Was it malevolence? To Malachim, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Moloch is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette. That must be what Aizen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. Sir, we just received a Sylph Jay from the boss of the Bloodwings. She has a job for us and wants us to meet her in Logress. How should we respond? Let's do it. Besides, we need to see if that demon in the villa was actually a Therian. Good point. And the Bloodwings might know something about the other Therians, too. We're heading for Logris. Prepare to set sail. Ready anytime! I lost my mother to a demon. Yet that girl's a Therian. I... I don't even know what I want anymore. Hey! That's pretty! You like to look at that thing, don't you? Yes. My mother... Someone very important to me gave me this. I treasure it a lot. Looking at it gives me strength. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Ah! What's wrong? My face! It's... it's scary! 
<laughs> I don't want to look like that. I don't want my mommy to hate me. <laughs> mommy! <laughs> Mommy! When I was her age, that's just how I cried. Come, Oana. I want you to see this. That huge owie. What happened? It's big and ugly, isn't it? There are scary things about my body, too. But... Do you think I'm scary, Kamalana? No, not at all. But are you all right? Does that hurt? Thanks, sweetie. I'm all right, I promise. What about me? Do you think I'm scary? You're such a sweetheart, Kamalana. Nobody could ever be scared of you. Not me, not your mother, not Lafisette. You don't have to cry anymore. It'll be okay. I promise. Okay. That scar... Was it from a demon? Yeah. They attacked my village when I was a girl. I was so hurt, I couldn't move. But my mother lured them away from me so I could survive. What happened to her? The last thing she said to me was, Stay strong and keep living. Oh. Come to the deck. Grimoire says she's learned something from the book. Hey, why is your face so red? It's nothing. Somehow I doubt that. It's nothing, I, I swear. Do you all remember the second verse of that song Lafayette read earlier? Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therian shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. Right. That's what I've gathered you all here to discuss. And we think that passage means that Inominach and the Therians will be revived by a chosen one, right? Yes, but the shall be forever reborn part kept bothering me. I've reconsidered my analysis. Suppose that instead of someone being chosen by Inominat to create Therians, the song means that Inominat chooses who becomes Therians. <sighs> but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn. What do you think that could mean? That someone receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as a Therian. Like Kamoana! Which is to say that the Abbey figured out how to turn people into Therians, and then got right to work. That's... Are you really that surprised? Artorius has always been one to prioritize the many over the individual, as I well know. Another thing to consider is this wording about Therians being forever reborn. This could mean that one Therian will be reborn again and again. Or it could mean that different Therians will be born to take their place. Meaning that even if you kill one, there are more waiting in line. They can't be wiped out. Looks like prioritizing the one over the many was the right call this time, eh, Velvet? I never said I wouldn't kill her, if it would prevent Inominat's reawakening. But Therians can't be killed. Not truly. Hmm... So, in a nutshell, if you kill one, Another person who's receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as one. Right. But the song says that seven mouths feed the body. So there's only so many around. If you don't kill them, the next ones won't be born. Exactly. So we remove the seven Therians from their Earth Pulse points instead. But then, we also have to protect them so the Abbey doesn't steal them back. Or kill them. Sounds tricky. We've got to protect my bug, too. Yeah, you take real good care of that thing now, got it? You bet I will! In that case, we should probably work on securing a proper hideout for ourselves. You got a secret base or anything, Aizen? It's every man's fantasy, but sadly, I don't. 
We need a hard-to-find spot. One where we can guarantee a steady supply of malevolence for the Therians. Hmm. Somewhere devoid of people, but full of malevolence. Real poser you got there. With the Abbey in control of the entire continent, finding a place like that will be easier said than done. Meanwhile, Inominat's reawakening draws ever closer. We'll have to keep collecting our Therians while we search for a hideout. For now, let's just get to Logris. Hey, old man! Give me all the water and food you got! Wait your turn, moron! I was drifting out at sea for three days! Almost died out there! we here, poor you! You probably deserved it! Say that again, wise ass! I dare ya! Ah, uh, shut up, both of ya! No one's getting anything until you pay me what you owe first. Uh, are they gonna be okay? Don't pay them any mind. Sailors are just a short-tempered bunch, that's all. Huh? The hell are you doing? What's going on? They've jacked up the price to dock our ship here. Oh yeah? Some real balls you've got there, buddy. If you lot want to moor here, that's the price you're gonna pay. Look, pirates are a liability to begin with, but calling your crew infamous these days would be putting it lightly. The more wanted you are, the more it's gonna cost to hide you. Capiche? <sighs> Hard to argue there. Benwick, just pay the man what he wants. <sighs> yes, sir. You're such pushovers. You and the captain both. I knew I could count on you to come through, Eisen. Pleasure doing business with you. Looks like I'm causing you trouble. It comes with the job. Don't sweat it. Some sailors just have longer tempers than others. <laughs> Noted. Logris. It was a lot tougher to get in the first time. More funny than tough, if you ask me. Oh, you mean Velvet's little dove act? Coo coo! I'd be careful teasing her if I were you. You know how she can get. Oh, don't act like you didn't enjoy it too. I'm sure you did, right? Good little boys don't lie to adults, you know. I might have. Just a little. Say it like a dove. It was funny. Coo, coo.
You too. Man, the capital sure is big. Yeah, with historical buildings and artisans and all, there's much of interest here for a boy who loves to learn. Uh-huh. Sightseeing's nice and all, but don't wander off and get lost. Oh yeah, sorry. Don't worry about him. He can take care of himself. I know, I was just saying. Eleanor, I need you to wait outside. The boss of the Bloodwings knows an exorcist is with us, but... Say no more. I'm sure they have clients who wouldn't appreciate their faces being known to the Abbey. Correct. Luffy said, you stay with Eleanor. Okay. I'll be back soon. My thanks for coming all this way. It's been a while. Would you care for a peach pie? What do you want? Oh, it would do you good to unwind every now and again, you know. Stretch a bow too far and its string is bound to snap. What do you want? <sighs> I would like you to escort this person out of the capital. Something smells about this, literally. 
Where am I taking them? Somewhere the authorities can't reach them. Sounds nice. I could do with such a place myself. No joke. We've been looking for a place to lay low, but we haven't had any luck yet. Well, come to think of it, I've heard a rumor that it's been a while since the Abbey has had any contact from Titania. Prison Island. Titania? But I thought the Abbey was in direct control of that place. Has the situation there gotten that bad since you left? Sometimes the answer is right under your nose. I think it might work. Yeah, could make a decent hideout actually. The Therians could definitely get their fill of malevolence there. And the Abbey is far too goody-goody to imagine an escaped prisoner would ever return to her prison by her own free will. At the very least, I'd say it's worth checking out. I take it our intel has proven useful? It has. But before we go, have you heard anything about the Abbey harboring demons? I'm aware there was a demon in the villa, and that it has been relocated. Where? I can't say right this moment, but I'm sure we will find out shortly. Alright, then in exchange for this passenger's safety, I want more information on that demon. You've got a deal. Aizen, I heard about your confrontation with Melchior. I'm sorry I wasn't able to help you find him. Yeah, you really blew that one, toots. It's fine. What's done is done. Have you given up on finding Eifried? No, I haven't. The crew and I will do whatever we can to quash the Abbey's plans. We do them enough damage, and the Abbey ought to start thinking about putting their hostage to good use. They'll set him up as a trap for us, and that's when we'll steal him back. Attacking the Abbey to create an opening for his escape. Clever. It's what Ifrid would do. That's all. Taking a while. Yeah. The Shepherd has a special mission for you. You are to protect the Malak Lafiset and bring him to the Logris Abbey headquarters. <sighs> What's wrong? Hey, you want to take a walk around the capital for a bit? I can show you some of the sights. But, um... You... you can't trust me. I understand. No, it's not that. I promise. I'd love to go sightseeing with you, Eleanor. Luffy said. Uh, well, we'll do it another time, okay? Why? It's just, you know, Velvet would get mad at us. Get mad about what? You're done. And who is this? A VIP entrusted to us by the head of the Blood Wings. We're stowing them away on Titania where the bad guys can't get at them. The prison island? Just who is this person? Didn't ask. What? <sighs> hey, something smells nice. Uh, uh huh? <laughs> Stop sniffing things. We're leaving. Scout sh I can't believe you take a job without bothering to ask who you're escorting or why. The less you know, the less trouble you invite.
powerful enemy. This is bullcrap. You're gouging us just because you can. Well, if you want to pay less, maybe you should go find someone more generous, hmm? Looks like they're at it again. for supplies, and... Tell you what. I'll give you a fair price. Actually, just take what you need. <sighs> we should all endeavor to help contribute to the common good of humanity, rather than selfishly pursue wanton profit. What? Uh, are you sure? Uh... uh no! Wait! What was I saying? You felt that too, didn't you, kiddo? Yeah. It disappeared, but I felt a strong force coming from somewhere to the north. It's called a domain. A Moloch zone of influence. Wait, if it's north of here, then... The Empyrean's throne? Did that happen because of something Inominat and Artorius did? I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. We should get far away from here, and quickly. So... the suppression... All right. We're safely on the rolling waves. Don't you think it's time you showed us your face, mystery monk? <laughs> You're right. My apologies. I knew it! Prince Percival! Percival Ilmid Asgard. Crowned prince and heir to the throne of the Midgan Kingdom. So he's next in line, is he? It looks like someone already had me figured out. Yes, Your Highness. I could tell from your fragrant wood scent, as only the royal family may wear it. But if I may ask, why? Must I explain myself to gain your aid? I myself could ask what an exorcist is doing consorting with members of the Underworld. I... I don't... It doesn't matter why you're here. On this ship, you're here for us to use to our advantage. Treat me as you will. It's not like I can ever go back. For a fellow born with silver spoons spewing out of his mouth, Princey Pooh is rather laid back. Prince Percival is an upstanding man, renowned for both his intelligence and his fair, just demeanor. 
It's widely believed that with him on the throne, Midgan's prosperity will continue and... Look, I played dumb earlier, but I smelled that scent too. He wore it for us to notice. He wanted us to know just what sort of position he held, and how useful he could be to us. He surprised me at least. Do you think we're being led into another trap? We definitely can't take that possibility off the table. When the time comes, he'll make a good hostage, if nothing else. Not if the ones we face are after his life, too. For now, let's just make sure we keep an eye on him. The Prince... He said he couldn't go back. I wonder why. The whole island's a prison. It's like a secret fort or something. Weirdly quiet, though. Yeah, I don't see a single exorcist on watch. <laughs> Let's scope out the inside. An exorcist! Are you all right? Headless knights. She's dead. The headless knight is back. Think this is the demon that attacked her? Hmm. Another prison riot? Kurogane, dial. You two protect Kamoana and the prince. Understood. Hold stop! Ah, ah, you ah, stupid ah, monkey! Ah, You're ah, giving ah, me a headache! Ah, Stay sharp! This one ah, must have survived ah, the riot! But I'm this close. I won't miss. Form zero. Be proud. You made me unleash my full power. So did the Abbey actually fail to quell the riot? I find that hard to believe. The prison was heavily staffed with exorcists. Perhaps it was venomization. Venomization? A dark ritual. Forcing demons to eat each other in order to produce ever stronger demons. So the demons devoured each other, creating a demon too powerful for the exorcists to control? I imagine the riot didn't help. Now whose fault could that have been, I wonder? Whatever happened doesn't matter to us now. We need to focus on how to take this place for ourselves. That exorcist from before said something about a headless knight, right? That one's probably the leader. Then we hunt it down and destroy it. Until we capture the island, let's use this room for our staging ground. I'll leave the prince and Kamoana to you two. Eliminate any enemies who come in. Understood. Don't expect much from me, but all right. Kamuana, if anything happens, call for me and I'll come running to protect you, okay? Okay. You stay safe too, Eleanor. Let's go. Yeah! 
We will need to be extremely from all the big old demons roaming about. Hey, it's you again. Ah, I'm so busy! I'm so busy I can't even notice what's going on around me! You're not fooling anybody. Why bother? I was hoping to not have to deal with you guys. Whenever I run into you, I always lose so much money. Because Velvet always forces unreasonable demands on you? Oh, Miss Exorcist! Your concern warms my little turtle's heart. I'm not forcing anything. I just think he's trying to take advantage of us by fixing his prices well above market rate. Price fixing? As in deliberately marking up items so as to take advantage of the less fortunate? I was under the impression that the Abbey strictly forbade such unscrupulous business tactics. Ah! <laughs> There's the thought, Miz. Our accounting is always above board. 25 hours a day, 8 days a week. No matter whens and no matter wheres, you can get whatever you need for the same fair price. That's good to hear. Eleanor, give the nice turtles that smile he so desires. I'm sure running a business is hard work. Hang in there. M much obliged. <laughs> were talking it seemed like you had an idea of who was behind the riot what happened here I think someone in your position would know there were reports of a large riot but I was caught up in chasing you so I heard little else it was a small affair really velvet Rokuro and I were being held on this island 
Velvet instigated the other prisoners to riot so that we could escape. She used the prisoners? Yeah. You'd expect different from me? <sighs> How did it end? We didn't stay to see, but the prisoners were losing badly. Or at least, that's what it looked like. But if that was the case, then where did all the exorcists go? I know Oscar left to report the incident, but the other guards should have remained at their posts. Well, if they didn't flee, we have to assume they were all killed. By this headless knight, perhaps? Well, no sense losing our heads, I suppose. But it looks like we're in for a heck of a fight. All we have to do is mop up anyone who's left. be the product of the venomization. Well, he definitely looks vicious enough. <laughs> Not as vicious as our velvet, though. Ah! Where is his voice even coming from? I don't know. Look inside. Takes care of that. Yeah. I feel something again. More malevolence? No, another Earth Pulse point. It must be on this island. 
I sense it too. It's very close. Directly underneath us, I would guess. What is this place? Welcome to the most secure cell in the entire complex. The darkest hole in Titania. Feel anything, Lafayette? Yeah. I think this is the Earth Pulse Point. If this cell is where the Earth Pulse Point is, then does that mean it housed a Therian? Yeah. And a real hungry one at that. Every day, they would toss demons into its cell. It would devour its fill, then wipe the blood from its lips. Never once realizing, it was delivering to Enominot the malevolence of hundreds of demons and prisoners. And then one day, there appeared before it a female Moloch, who shattered the barrier and freed the Therian from its cage. But the Therian knew no mercy, and it devoured its liberator. And it was then... It was then I obtained the power. The power to avenge my brother! Velvet... You're a Therian? This prison island was a feeding ground for the Therian, harnessing the malevolence created by the prisoners within. But because Velvet escaped, the malevolence went out of control. Wow, the same darn thing that happened back in Kamoana's village. Lord Artorius would never have done such a thing. No, what's so unbelievable? That he used his wife's brother as a human sacrifice? That he imprisoned his wife's sister? Because that's what your damned Holy Shepherd did! All to get his hands on Inominot's power! I'm sure he... he had a reason for... A reason?! To spare the world of its pain! Don't give me that! Who will spare my brother's pain? Who will soothe my brother's despair? He murdered my little brother, Luffy! Then you'll stand there and tell me it was for the greater good?! At any rate, that's one less Therian for us to track down. Velvet. Help! Eleanor! Come, Oana? What? Did Velvet yell at you so hard you're starting to hear voices now? I have a feeling something's wrong. Kamoana could be in danger. But we already beat the Headless Knight. I still can't shake this feeling. Please, let's go back and check on them. Scout ship setting sail. So, Velvet is a Therian, is she? I knew there was something off about her. But it's what she cried out that's really on my mind. Luffy said, is Velvet truly Lord Artorius' younger sister? She never told me. If it were true, I suppose it would explain her knowledge of Lord Artorius' training. If you're so curious, why not ask her yourself? Hey Velvet, what's your connection to Artorius? Uh, Rokuro, have some tact! I heard you whispering. It doesn't bother me. Artorius was married to my late sister, Selica. He was our brother-in-law. 
We lived together for more than ten years. That does explain a few things. So he sacrificed his little brother, and turned his sister into a Therian. But... you were his family. To his view of the grand scheme, family is inconsequential. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All he did was act according to his ideal logic. <sighs> well, enough chit-chat. Let's get moving. Turns out that Velvet is a Therian who consumes malevolence. And too much malevolence is what changes people into demons. Strong enough malevolence can persist after the person who created it dies, turning their corpse or spirit into a raging monster. That's how undead and phantom demons come about. Then the demons Velvet killed turned back into humans because she devoured their malevolence. Yeah, and consequently, they avoided becoming undead or anything like that. So she saved them. Well, I mean, a corpse is a corpse, of course, of course. Do you think she could devour only the malevolence and turn a living demon human again? Unfortunately, that's impossible due to malevolence's self-reinforcing nature. When Therians are connected to Enominot through an Earth Pulse point, they seem to be able to absorb small concentrations of malevolence from the surrounding area and inhibit the creation of new demons. But any human who builds up enough malevolence to turn into a demon will keep producing malevolence as long as they live. That's right. To devour any malevolence, I need to cut it off at the source. That's how my powers work. Velvet, I'm sorry. I don't mind it. Actually, I find it convenient. This way, I'll never forget my hatred for Artorius. Plus, as long as you stay away from an Earth Pulse point, you get to keep the power of any malevolence you consume. Fuel for my hatred, yes. Uh. Sweetheart. A headless knight and a horse demon. It's giving off a ton of malevolence. This must be the true survivor of the venomization process. Oh, I get it. The dying exorcist lady wasn't saying headless knight is back. She was going for headless knight on horseback. Whatever the case, we'll fight whoever we have to to claim this island. Now I can't help but one trick up! Yeah! <laughs> 
I'm this close. I won't miss! Form Zero! That's venomization, all right. Definitely stronger than that headless lump of armor. I beg your pardon? Not you. <laughs> the demon from the villa? No, look! It's absorbing the malevolence. It's Ethereum. Actually, that hawk is Griffin, my one and only friend. <laughs> A damned Therian. So that's what Tabitha meant when she said we'd find out shortly. But your highness, why do you have a Therian? It's like I said, Griffin has been my dear friend ever since I was a child. Even if he's a Therian now, that hasn't changed. So you knew you were helping Atherian escape. What are you plotting? <sighs> I have no plots or schemes. I just want Griffin to be free. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. The crown prince and future king, he's gonna do whatever he likes. <laughs> I suppose I am at that. But if I am, it's the first time I've ever been allowed a choice of my own. When you're a prince, you're not a person. You're an institution, one designed to serve the state and its people. Say, for instance, you're doing your law studies and your back suddenly itches. What do you do? I mean, I'd scratch it. Who wouldn't? When I did that, my tutor gave me a whipping so hard the blood ran down my back. The reason being that I prioritized a personal feeling, that is to say, my itch, over my studies in service of the state. Uh. Seeing Griffin lay claim to the skies, let me imagine my own freedom. It was my lone solace over the years. But then, he turned out to be responsive to Innominat's power. I take it the Midgand royal family is well aware that the Abbey is creating Therians? Of course. How could we not? 
The kingdom offers unequivocal support to Shepherd Artorius's vision of reason and will. Even so, if there was one thing I could never permit, it was seeing Griffin locked up and unable to fly. Never. I tricked the exorcist on guard and disabled the barrier. But then Griffin attacked the exorcist and killed him. That's why you said you could never go back. Eh, they can overlook a single dead exorcist. But with Etherian removed, malevolence will engulf the capital. I knew full well what I was doing. And yet... I couldn't watch my friend's life be stripped away. Your Highness... He chose a single bird over the world. Why do you think that birds fly? Uh, that's what Lord Artorius asked me! My anatomy book says birds can fly because their bones are light and their wing muscles are enormously strong. Birds fly because a bird that cannot fly is no bird at all. That's what I think. I understand now. As long as you remain on this island, you may do as you please. But if you try to escape, I'll kill you. That should work. This way we'll have him on hand if we ever need a hostage. Understood. I appreciate you letting Griffin and me stay here. Well, now that that's taken care of, let's build ourselves a hideout. Velvet, do you know where Eleanor is? Wasn't she just playing with you? Yeah, but then she left. I'm worried because she looked pretty sad. Can you go find her? Why me? Mm. All right, all right, fine. Just don't cry on me, okay?
Hey, any idea where Eleanor went? How should I know? I'm too busy to spare any time worrying about anyone else. You look pretty distinctly unoccupied to me right now. Right, I'm busy being unoccupied. You're... what? It's simple. When you have free time, it means you're busy trying to avoid having any business to do. You're too weird for this world, Mogilu. Says the woman with the world's blandest personality. I always figured you'd be the type to take off as soon as things got hairy. So what keeps you here? I am utterly, completely, totally, wholly devoid of anything else to do. Which is to say I'm... Unoccupied. Right, now you get it. Besides, I have to stick around to see how our bet turns out, don't I? You are, Eleanor. Kamoana's worried about you. You actually came looking for me? Can't say no to a crying child. Ah, uh, indeed. She may be Ethereum now, but deep down, she's still a lonely little girl. That's something I've come to realize in traveling with you all. Wretched demons and Therians. Even the Malakim who had only thought of as tools, they all live and think as humanly as the rest of us. Mm. I was so clueless. I didn't know what Demon Blight really was, nor what the Abbey was doing. Through it all, I... I knew nothing beyond blind belief in whatever I was taught. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. The coward's path is not that of an exorcist. They may say, I didn't know anything, so I can't be blamed. I can't... I can't live like that. <sighs> I think I'll stay here a little longer to cool my head off. Please tell Kamoana I'm alright. Don't stay out too long. The sea breeze can get cold. <sighs> Thank you. Don't get the wrong idea. If you got sick or something, Kamoana and Lafisa would worry. That's all.
I have something to say. There's something I've been hiding, until now. I've been acting undercover on a special mission for Lord Artorius. I was to watch over the Malik Lafayette and bring him to Abbey Headquarters. So vital was the mission, I was to do whatever it took, even kill my fellow exorcists. You are gonna take me to them. I'm sorry for deceiving you, Lafayette. Originally, I was going to get you to lower your guard, then take you in. However, I no longer intend on following the Abbey's orders. You're turning your back on Artorius? No. I still believe in the sincerity of Lord Artorius. That the world he seeks is one that will benefit all humankind. But nevertheless, I simply cannot bring myself to condone the methods he has chosen to achieve that vision. So... I will help you protect the Therians. Until I discover the answer I seek. Eleanor! I want to live a life that I don't have to be ashamed of. And to do that, I have to learn the truth for myself. <laughs> so, you live by your emotions after all. Maybe you found your own creed. Welcome to our wonderful world of wickedness. Don't equate us. To act in opposition of one's feelings is to act opposed to reason. You never make things simple, do you? You should be glad I don't. Yeah, after all, she's my vessel. Yes, yes. So, I think our next order of business is to find ourselves another Therian. Well, that's the extent of my insight. Anyone got any actual leads? What if we had Eleanor swipe some intel on them from the Abbey? That could work. I don't know. It wouldn't work. Officially, the Abbey still considers her a traitor. So who would leak anything to her? Yeah. Besides, we can't put Lafayette in danger like that. And anyway, Eleanor's terrible at being a spy. Ungracious, but accurate. You know that special underground cell from yesterday? I want to go back there. There's something I want to try out. All right, let's go.
we're here, what now? Well, so I've been thinking about Earth Pulse points. They're where the flow of the Earth Pulse, the Earth's natural forces, are concentrated. Right. And Inominat is using those points to acquire malevolence and reawaken himself. You seem to have a knack for sensing them out. Once you're close enough, you can even pinpoint their location. Except, I don't have to be close at all. When we came here yesterday, I felt another place. A place just like this. Are you saying you can use this Earth Pulse Point as a conduit to find the others? I think so. I don't know how far it works, and I can't say if Ethereum will be on the other end. Still, it'll give us something real to go on. Please, give it a try. Okay. Anything? Yes, I felt it. There are dozens of Earth Pulse points scattered around, but I sensed a few big ones that stood out. So you can even detect their size? Yeah, at least I think I can. This island is one of the big ones. There are two more like it somewhere to the east and the southeast. But I think those are the Warg Forest and the Temple of Palamedes. Still... That suggests we're more likely to find Therians at the larger Earth Pulse points. We've got three Therians to go. Anything that helps us narrow down our choices is a boon. Yeah, you've done great work today, Lafayette. That's for sure. Thank goodness you're here. You're a marvel. One of the wonders of the world, kiddo. It's not that big of a deal, really. Hmm. Then let's go Therian hunting. We have an honest to goodness lead, or dishonest to badness in our case. Broke again. Still not good enough. You think it's your swords that are weak? You don't think maybe your body's just stupid tough? No. If it can't cut me, it's just not good enough. I need stronger materials to make a better sword. I'd love to try Orichalcum, but getting that stuff is next to impossible. Orichalcum. That's the strongest metal in the world, right? A rare metal that's only been found in ancient ruins, and seldom at that. I've seen fragments of the metal myself. But I've never even heard of a piece large enough to forge into a weapon. I have. I heard a rumor that a block of orichalcum was discovered in an ancient ruin some 200 years ago. Unfortunately, the boat carrying it sank in a storm. From the depths of the earth to the depths of the sea. A sunken ship. Treasure at the bottom of the sea. <sighs> that would stir any sailor's heart. If we knew where to find it, could it be salvaged? The ship's crew drowned, so nobody knows where she sank. Besides, it's a centuries-old rumor. Who's to say it's even true? Right. <laughs> no sense in wishing for what can't be gotten. I'm sure there's other material you can use. <laughs> even Dial makes a good point sometimes. Hey, what do you mean, even Dial? Even Dial's getting angry! Saying it like that's just weird, Kamoana. Even Kamoana is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our target is an Earth Pulse point about as big as the one here. Let's start with the closest one and go from there. Which way is it? The closest one is to the west. Got it. Lead the way, Lafayette. My pleasure. Thank you. 